today's video, we're doing the RP195. Yep, that's an R-Pod. Come on. Hey there, we're at South Thompson RV here in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada, and we're going to take you on a tour of the RP195. As usual, in the description, you can find the timestamps and the currency converter and the link to our RV research material that you can use too. And you can buy us a coffee if you want. It's kind of a cold day out here today. Also at the end, you're going to find a link to the construction of the RPOD, so we'll make sure you want to watch that too. And so let's take you on a little tour, starting here at the front. You get the curved front. Now this is a seven and a half foot wide model. Um, you do get the front window. I'm not sure if this is automotive grade glass. It should be, but I'm gonna check on that for you. Um, you do get a bit of a rock guard here. Would be nice to see that up a little higher. Cool for the 2021s is their new graphic package, which has this gold in it. And these just came onto the lot and they haven't had a chance to really give them a good wash down yet. But when that gold is shining in the sun, it is very cool. So I really love that. So you've got room for your batteries here. You've got a 20 pound propane tank. You get an electric jack that does have a light in it. And there is a bike rack mount here too. So that's kind of cool. Let's move around to this side. Just want to point out that your uh, battery shutoff is here and you do get four manual stabilizer jacks and let's see what's in here so you these doors are on magnets so that's nice and then here's your pass-through storage it's fairly spacious actually you also get your tank uh, water fresh water fill you get a city water connection and underneath there is a fresh water dump so you can empty that tank moving down you can see your uh, sewer connection with your black flush. Now the seven and a half foot does have the fully enclosed underbelly, but the actual valve itself is not up in there. Kind of a bummer. Um, you do get a little slide on this unit, which is quite nice because it adds a lot of space. And you get a, it's on a Schwintech um, mechanism. And here is your bulb and your flap for that. Now remember, these are small, very lightweight trailers that you can pull with, obviously, a lesser powerful vehicle. Um, so they don't have some of the upgrades that I'd like to see, like the slide toppers and the such. Let's move on down. Up at the top above the slide, you can see the bulb seal to give you that watertight um, seal when you push your slide all the way in. You can also see the rain rail up there with the little bit of the drip spout to push the water away coming down to the bottom here you do have a cable connection and your 30 amp plug with again your manual uh, stabilizer jack and then back here is another uh, sewage hookup with your gray pull and again the valve is outside of the underbelly and so what i'm noticing then is that you're going to have to put together a y and then go to the drain spot for your sewage or you're going to have to hook up two systems in order to go to the sammy sanny not my favorite setup um, but i guess that's just the way it is so round back you do get the ladder because you can walk on the flat portion only of the rpod roof and then you get your spare tire these are quite aggressive <laughs> tires like this is a real spare isn't it let's while we're back here take a look at what type of tires they are this is the Westlake ST 235 75 R15 so the trailers that are built over on the west coast uh, have a bit of a higher pitch to the axle so that they've got some clearance and these are some pretty aggressive tires so you know to help with that off-roading that people are wanting to do so let's go around to this side and take a look so we've got a nice sized awning and I'll figure out what that is you got some outdoor speakers um, this door is an interesting kind of glass door but I'll come back to that because I want to take you over and show you the uh, front compartment here again on a magnet 
So this is the other side of that pass-through. And also, they have this little rail along the side here where you can hook a grill or something like that on. And I do like that because the, um, the level of this seems most appropriate to us. So you also get a sprayer and you get your plug in there. And here's your black flush. So you can clean out that tank when you need to. The other important thing to note, these are aluminum wheels. And you can look at that construction video because we talk about the torsion axle system there. And because this is the seven and a half wide, only a portion of this wheel is on the outside of the rig. So let's go over here and talk about these steps. So the way they work is there's a slider system in here that we just lift them into. The treads here are aluminum, but they are on a metal piece that does the sliding. So you'll want to take extra care of that if you're on salty roads and things like that. You'll want to clean that up. The door on the R-Pod I find super interesting. It looks like a glass door. Now, remember, they just came in and they've been driving down some wet roads, so they're a little dirty here. But this is a very cool door. It looks glass, but it's not. I can't see through it or anything like that. I, I, it's just an interesting and unique door and I really like it. It is on a friction hinge. And I wanna point out that there's this little bulb here that hits into the fender so that you don't have to worry about the two of them hitting. The uh, screen door is almost a self-closer. <laughs> I think it's just the wind it is. <laughs> in the wind it's a good self closer. But it's a good uh, screen door. Let's go in and check out the rest. Well, how are you guys liking the R pod? <laughs> Kinda cute, right? Again, remember, smaller, lighter weight trailers. Got this little entrance here with some hooks for your coats and things. I see they also have uh, these dog uh, bowl carriers. Interesting, right? You've got your uh, buttons for your lights and slide and all that kind of stuff and your panel for your tanks. You get a big fridge. So this, I'm going to call this a, a six cubic foot, I think, but it's nice. Very reachable. I love the level of it and it's a pretty decent location. I mean, remember you're in a single axle trailer, so it is going to kind of bounce a little more in your fridge is being at the back but into the kitchen here the countertops I like they are uh, a laminate but it's a rolled over no seams large sink it's a circle sink which I always find kind of cool um, nice high tap this is a good idea right so when they winterize like how many trailers have we been in where they've been winterized but yet they've got dripping of fluid all over the place so pretty nice. Um, there's electrical over in that corner. Uh, the decor is a, quite a bit lighter for the 2021s. So that's nice. Uh, get your blinds there. Uh, puck lighting. And this is kind of a um, goldy tone handle. So I do like that on these light cabinets. Uh, so there's three of those. And remember, they're rounded, right? So that does change how much space you have back there. But you could definitely put bins or things like that back there. Uh, then I wish it had more countertop space because, you know, I just like that better. But it is still a pretty decent amount of kitchen for this size of trailer. Um, down here, let's show you all the storage. So you get three... Um, nice sized drawers let me see this last one yeah so all three are drawers i like those and then you've got uh storage there and there so that's nice too over here uh you do get a convection microwave not just a microwave so that's and it's pretty good size right because you don't get an oven in here but you do get a glass top over your two burner propane stove so that's nice too and then behind this door you get a big pantry right 
So what I like about this is that these are all adjustable shelves, so you can set them up to whatever stuff you're going to put in there. I mean, cereal boxes need more space than cans, right? What I'm not noticing is where I would put a garbage can. So let's move down this way where the dinette is. This is the slide, right? Which is nice. Um, you've got upper cabinetry, which goes all the way through and is nice. It also has um, some more puck lighting in there. There's lots of puck lighting. I like the way it's lit. You get another window blinds. Um, I believe these are single pane. Yeah. And I do like the decor here. Let's just start with that. I really do like the decor. I like that the dinette is kind of a U-shaped in this slide, but I'm running into a few challenges. <laughs> One being this table. Now there's nothing wrong with this table. It's just its placement in this dinette is a bit odd because they've got this very cool little extra piece here to give you extra seating little place to stretch out on that kind of thing um, but it does its placement is a bit odd the cushion doesn't quite fit and this is a fixed piece now that's cool because it does add storage for you down there so I like the extra storage idea um, but having it be fixed makes it so that these cushions are butted right up against the table leg and that's where the challenge comes in for me in that how do I get in right like if I'm sitting at the end my legs are up against the table and if I wanted to sit back here I actually have to move the table out to get past the legs to sit back here and then pull, pull it back in so it's uh it's just a bit cumbersome like why not just have a post table here that we can all move around. And although I love these little ottoman ends, let's make them not fixed so that I can have them or not have them. Um, all you gotta do is put a bottom in it. They could be at the end of the bed. They could move, they could travel in the shower. They could be wherever and they wouldn't be in the way. So if you only wanted this piece, which is quite comfortable, I might add, you could have this piece. But if you needed the extra seating, then you could have that too. Or you could just have more walking space. And this table, although nice, I don't see anything wrong with the size of it or anything like that. You could even have two posts if you needed to. But it wouldn't be blocking your legs from getting into the table. So just a few of my little observations as we're getting in because it's all really great. I like the space. I like the comfort. I like the decor. I like the size. I just don't like the configuration with this particular table. I also noticed they've got a strap here on the seat and I'm not 100% sure what it's for, but maybe it's to secure that table. Um, if any of you are owners out there and would like to share with us any information you have on that strap, we'd appreciate it, all of us watching. So yeah, just a few things. you know. And the other thing was, we were thinking, um, does this make down into a bed, right? Because this table would be the perfect size to fit down. But we did try it, and that would also explain why these ends are fixed, because you could then secure this down into a bed. But we found that even with this extra cushion back here, there wasn't enough cushions to fit that space. So I don't think it was intended for a bed. But of course, if there's someone out there who has uh, made this into a bed and made it work, maybe it's just a different cushion fit configuration. I don't know. Again, I still think the pedestal table would fix all of these issues and it would be great. Um, so let's go into this side. We're in the bathroom into the bathroom, I get my favorite thing, slider door. I love that. It's just such a great way to manage the space. And then moving into the shower here, uh, this, this is how big it is. This is how tall it is. You get that little skylight. This is a one piece surround with some shelves and it moves down to a second piece base 
um, where you know they don't do a lot of caulking on these in general. The taps are standard, what you'd expect taps. Uh, the shower curtain is a little bit different. The shower is indeed a curtain. This is kind of like a vinyl fabric and it's on a bit of a, a frame here. It has a radius top with little pieces in it, but the bottom is straight and it only has one little guide in it. So it appears that it's crooked, but that's just because we have two different shapes. And as it closes, it follows the rail and then it's good. So it, it's the way it's supposed to be. Then when you move over to the vanity area, nice cabinetry again, right? I'm really liking these light colors. The mirror's at a good height. You get some storage in there. And then coming down to your countertop, small sink. Again, we're in a small trailer, average taps. But you do get the countertop extending over there. So I really do like that. And there's our storage underneath there. Now, yeah, the plumbing is there, but it also reaches over to this uh, section over here that's got this bit of netting to hold everything in. You get a uh, Thetford foot flush plastic toilet, and you do get electrical over there and switches over here. You've got uh, venting underneath the shower, so you'll get some heat. And then up at the top, you do get a max air fan, but you need to reach up there to hit the on and off button. You need a wooden spoon. Yeah, it's like that. that's what we would use as a wooden spoon. So, you know, it's a very functional, nice uh, bathroom. And then moving over into the bedroom area, you do get a walk around almost bed. So this is as far up as you can go. So still a bit challenging to make, but you can walk around it for the most part. Um, there is some closet space on both sides with a little bit of decorative glass in it, and that is nice. Um, switches on the side, electrical and USB down here. And let me lift this up and see what we've got under there. Okay, so there's quite a bit of storage there, right? And on this side, um, like I said, the switch is here, but there's more electric and USB down there. And God love this big window right there and blinds. Um, lighting is there. I don't want to put my feet on the bed, so I'm going to hang it off. And so there's, it's a big bed. There's quite a bit of space. So that's nice. Also, uh, on this end is where the TV is and it's on a arm so you could watch it from bed or you could move it around and watch it from the dinette there's a little bit of shelving up here nice windows on both sides and it's pretty spacious i like it so now let's go see what it's like if we put the slide in so deciding on whether you've got room with this slide closed this is the depth of it and what we figured out is that these stationary pieces here if you take the cushion off the slide couch seating area comes right over top of this and is stabilized by this so that's one of the reasons that it's there like that and when the table is put away whether you've stored it underneath the bed or maybe you hook it up to this strap on the seat but you still have all of your walking space here so the cracker barrel factor is really high on this one because when you come in the door you can get to your fridge you can get to your sink the 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 pantry is going to be out here so you could still reach your stove it would just be a little bit awkward you wouldn't be able to use the microwave you could have this would be more like a couch now you could get to the bathroom you could get to the bed you'd have it all. So it's very functional with the slide in. Also, let's take a look at the ceiling. There's quite a bit of headroom in here. The curve at the back, because remember this is a seven and a half foot wide model, you don't even notice because it's up in there. And then the curve at the front is way at the head of the bed, so no big deal. So you got lots of headroom and you've got puck lighting, easy to take care of, adds a lot of good light. You've got speakers and you've got the AC. This is small enough space. It doesn't need to be ducted throughout. So that's good too. And then let's take a look at the floor. 
what I love about it, first of all, it's just nice looking floor. It's a durable vinyl floor, but there's no carpet anywhere. We love that. So also, uh, while we're down here, the furnace is over here uh, and it should heat everything just fine. But you should take note that when the slide is in, uh, the pantry will be blocking your furnace. So the heat would be just sort of hitting against the side because there's only that much space there. Also, I noticed while we were down here that there is pet bowls and a nice little spot to keep them there. That's kind of cool. And you get a central back. That's great, right? You got all this nice uh, vinyl floor and really super easy to clean up. Now let's take a look at the numbers. Now for the numbers on the 2021 RP195, the GVW comes in at 4,762 pounds and the cargo carrying capacity on this one is at 956 pounds. So it's um, lightweight still, but not in that ultra lightweight category. The exterior length, 22 feet, 2 inches. The exterior height, 9 foot, 10 inches. And I believe the Hood River models uh, are about 4 inches taller. And I think that's because of they pitched the axle so you have more clearance. The exterior width, 96 inches. So remember, it's that 8 foot axle that's on it. All the tanks, fresh, gray, and black, are at 30 gallons. That awning outside is at 11 feet. And for beds, that front queen is at 60 by 74, and they're not showing this dinette as a bed, so I'm gonna ask some more questions around that. And the all important number here at South Thompson RV today, the MSRP is at 36,102 Canadian dollars. So, you know, if this is the one for you, give them a call. I'm sure they'd be happy to talk about it with you. So that's a wrap on this one. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe. And if we've provided you with any value, feel free, buy us a coffee. We'd like to have one with you. Hit the link in the end to get to the construction video and we love having you along. Thanks for watching.